Hello and welcome to this Fusion 360 training series. My name is Mike Matera and I'll be walking you through this course. We're going to be covering turning using live tooling. We're also going to talk about subspindle transfer. These lessons assume that you've already been through the Introduction to Turning series. There's a lot of important things that are covered in that series that we probably won't be going over here in any detail. But let's get started with this. The first thing we need to do is open the sample files. So let's go to the data panel and I want you to go to the CAM samples project folder where you'll find a tutorials folder. Now in here you'll find Chuck 3 soft jaws and turning hex cap. This is the actual part that we're going to be using for this lesson. Now we can't just open these and use them directly because when you open a file from the CAM samples folder it's read only. So we're going to start by opening the turning hex cap and you'll see up here on the top it says read only. Sample files cannot be edited. Use save as to create a copy. So we're going to be copying this to a different folder. Now part of what we're doing in this project is we're going to attach this chuck to the part. All that's really going to do for us is to help us visualize what the setup is going to look like. So let's open up that chuck. Now that we have these two parts open, let's go back to the root folder. And what I'd like you to do is to create a new project folder. You could name that project folder anything you want and then we'll save these two parts to that folder. Now I've already created a folder called Lathe Live Tooling. I'm going to enter that folder and then for my chuck I'm going to do a file, save as, and I'm going to save it to that Lathe Live Tooling location. Next we'll do the same with the turning hex cap. We'll go to File, Save As, and we're saving it to the Lathe Live Tooling folder, or whatever your folder is called. Now you can see that this part is no longer in read-only mode. We're able to do any modifications that we want to this part. So if we've completed that, let's minimize the data panel and talk about what we're going to do. Now in this part, we're going to be starting with the outer diameter. We're going to face it, we're going to rough the outer stock, we're going to drill the hole on the end, we're going to mill the hex around the front, we're going to put this radius lip along the outside of that hex, and then we're going to mill these slots. After we've completed that, we'll initiate a stock transfer and a cutoff on the bar. Once it's been transferred to the subspindle, then we can start work on the ID of the part, where we'll drill a hole, bore out the inside, and then create a thread on the inside of the part. Before we get into that, let's add something to this part so it looks more like bar stock. I'm going to go to modeling mode, and I'm going to select the extrude command, where I'll pick this face. And I'm going to drag that out. We'll drag that out to about two inches. That'll be enough material that we can hold the part in the chuck and still have something to visualize. Now I don't want to join this to the existing part. I want this to be a new body because I want to be able to cut off the back side of this model. If I join them together, I can't do that. So with that extended out and the operation is new body, we're going to say OK to that. Now if you wanted that color to match the color of the part, you can right click, go to appearance, and then we can grab this polished brass material and drop it on the part. Now it'll all look the same. Now if you still have that chuck open, you can close that because we're not going to be using it from here. Once that's closed, we'll go back to our data panel and where you see that chuck in your folder. I want you to select the chuck, right click, and tell it to insert into the current design. So you have more screen space, you can minimize the data panel. Now you may need to rotate this around so you can see it better. It's pretty obvious that the chuck is not pointing in the right direction, but we're going to move it around. 
When you import a part like this, the move copy command automatically comes up so that you can manipulate to put this part wherever you want. We're going to use these to rotate the part up 90 degrees. And then I'll use this arrow to move it back. And we could take a look straight on from the right side view here and move that to wherever we like. Now it doesn't really matter if we get it, you know, exactly resting on the chuck jaw or off of the chuck jaw. Remember, this is just for visualization. The only way this might matter is if you're using the face of the chuck as your zero reference. If you wanted to, you could probably make this minus 6.3, and that's actually pretty close. Once you have that in position, we're going to say OK. Now my chuck jaws are sized pretty closely to fit the outside of this part. What's nice about this model and some of the other models that are available, I just want to show you that if we back up to the root here, go to our cam samples, you'll find some work holding tools here. There's vices, there's chucks, all kinds of things you can use, and they work the same way as I imported this chuck. Now, if you want to be able to move these jaws back and forth, you can do that. Right now, this part is still linked to the original file. So what I need to do is to break that link. I'm going to right click on that chuck here in the list and tell it to break link. Now, I'm not sure why, but there are some pinion gears that were inside of this and they actually come to the outside. One of the engineers tried to explain it to me why that happens, and let me just say that those pinions don't have anything to do with us successfully machining the part. So what I'm going to do is select that pinion and hit delete on my keyboard. And since all of those pinions were connected together, it gets rid of all of them, and that's fine. We don't need them for what we're going to be doing. But now, if I want to be able to move these chuck jaws on my keyboard, I'll press M for move. Make sure that the move object is set to bodies. And I'm going to pick this jaw. Now, when you pick this jaw, make sure that your arrows are pointing in the direction that the jaw points. You can see the arrow right here. So I'm going to pick that first. And then I'm going to pick the lower part of the jaw because it's a two-piece jaw. Now I can grab that arrow, and when I move it back and forth, all the jaws move together. So if you had a larger part, or a smaller part, you could move these to accommodate the size of your part. As I said before, ours is already at the correct size, so I'm not going to move this at all. I'll just hit cancel. So that takes care of the first lesson. We opened up our sample drawings. We created a new folder. We learned how to import a fixturing component, and to move that fixturing component into the appropriate location for machining our part.